Instagram has changed their algorithm yet again. In an official video right from the head of Instagram, they have come out publicly to state how the algorithm works and how it's changed as of late. So in this video, what we're gonna do is watch that video. I'm gonna provide some commentary and actually break down how you should take this advice and work it into your strategy on Instagram. So let's get right into the video and hear from the head of Instagram, Masseri. All right, let's get into this. This is the head of Instagram. Let's hear from him. Today, I'm gonna to explain how ranking works on Instagram. I did a video like this about two years ago, but we've made a lot of changes and improvements to Instagram over the last few First of all, that's pretty crazy that they haven't come out and talked about the algorithm in two years, apparently, from the head of IG, so this should be good. Two years, so I thought it'd be good to do an updated version. Fair warning, this is gonna be a little bit of a long video because I'm gonna go into detail about how ranking works in stories and feed and reels and explore, and it does take a little bit of time to do He's probably gonna mention this, but what I love about the fact that he made clear is the fact that there's different algorithms for every different kind of content. When people say algorithm, they don't realize it's algorithms in terms of depending where you're trying to show up on the platform. And so he's gonna break down in this video how each one of them works and what you wanna be doing to take advantage of it to get as much reach as possible. Do that. But to start, people often talk about the algorithm, but there is no one algorithm for Instagram. There are many algorithms and ranking processes we use to try to personalize the experience to make it as interesting as we can for each and every person who uses Instagram. We believe in this idea of personalization. What you're interested in and what I'm interested in is different, and so therefore your Instagram and my Instagram should be different. And ranking is how we deliver on that promise. So let's start with stories because they're at the top of the app. Now, when you open up Instagram, the first thing we do is we look at every story that you might see because it was posted by someone you follow within the last 24 hours. And we estimate how interested you might be in each and every one. Now we can't know for sure how interested you are, but we can use proxies or guesses. And so what we do is we make predictions. We predict certain things that you might do with the story. You might tap on a story to open it, you might reply to the author. You might like this story or send a reaction or an emoji. These are all... I love that he said author. I think that's hilarious. But this just goes to show, as it's been stressed many, many times, they're tracking literally everything. Everything that you do on the app, it's being tracked. And all of this is points of relationship. And so if they see that you're constantly getting people to open your stories, they're gonna be seeing your stories far more often. And if you get them to interact with it, that's a further indicator of a relationship that you, you have. So that's why you wanna be taking advantage of your stories, not just spamming them. You actually wanna make them have value so people click them, watch them, and interact with them. That's the holy grail. That's how you're gonna get your stories pushed way further. And he's literally saying this. And he's probably gonna talk about stickers too. Proxies for indicating that you are interested in what that person had to say. And the way we make these predictions is we use signals. Information that we know about you and your interests. Now the most important signals for stories in order of importance are your history of interacting with stories. So do you- So what, you're, what you see is gonna be depending what you've seen and watched in the past. So what have you clicked on and actually watched? You tend to look at stories from this author. Your history of interactions with the author of that story. So do you tend to reply to that author or like stories from that author in the past? And then how close do you seem to be to that author in general? Maybe you message them really often. That's another signal. Now we use those signals to make those predictions. The higher we think the likelihood of you tapping on that story or replying to that story, the higher up in stories it's gonna be for you when you open up Instagram. So think about that as the creator. If you wanna constantly show up as one of the first few stories, you have to be building relationships with your community and constantly be giving Instagram opportunities to actually track this level of closeness or this level of community and connection that you actually have with the people that are following you. The better that you do this, the more story views you're going to get and the more often you're gonna rank near the first few stories. So give yourself that opportunity to actually consistently show up by creating that relationship with all the tools that Instagram gives to you within the story feature. All of this is a means of trying to help connect you with the people that you care about and that you're interested in. Next. So another thing that he didn't really mention there that I would love to go into, <laughs> this is my video, I guess I can, <laughs> is the fact that uh, use things that can actually promote connection being tracked. So that's why story features are such a big deal with stickers, polls, all those things, because that's something that's tangible and trackable, right? So the more people that you get to interact with your story via a poll or a story sticker or whatever, that's all good for you because that can be tracked from IG and it's gonna increase the likelihood that not only that those people interacted with see your story, but also that the story that you've posted is higher value, meaning more people will see your story overall, even the people that typically 
it may not. If you get a ton of engagement, it gets pushed to more and more of your followers. And then the better that you actually establish this connection with more people, that's how you maintain high story views consistently. Let's get back to Adam. Let's go to feed. The goal of feed is to catch you up on the very best that's happened on Instagram since you used the app last. This means photos and videos not only from accounts that you follow, but also from accounts that you might not have heard yet, but we think you might be interested in. And what we do here, again, is make a series of predictions. So for every post, we predict how likely you are to comment on it, like it, share it, tap on the profile pic or even spend a few seconds looking at it. And we make those predictions using signals, okay. information we have. The most important signals in order of importance are one, your history of interactions. What do you tend to interact with and like on Instagram in the past? Two, information about the post. Is it popular? Is there a lot of activity around it? Three, information about the person who made that post. And four, how much do you tend to interact with that author of that post in the past? And what we try and do is order things in feed in the order that you might be interested in it. So the things that you're the most interested in should be at the top and the least interested in the bottom. Now, I wanna be clear. We don't know exactly what you're interested in. We're making an educated guess and we make mistakes, which is why it's so important that we build controls to help you shape the experience into something that you love. Now, two new controls that we've built, actually, since I made the last one of these videos is favorites and following. Favorites is a list of accounts that you curate of accounts that you are really interested in. And if any of your favorites post a photo or video, we're going to do our best to show that photo or video at the very top of feed next time you open up Instagram. And following is a feed of photos and videos only from accounts you follow. And so many people have asked for that so that you'd only see content from the people that you're following and typically in chronological order. But I don't think many people use that feature. If you do, let me know in the comments. I've never used it. And in chronological order, if you really want to just focus on what's the latest and greatest that has been posted by the people that you decided to follow over the years. Next, a third. So for main feed content, for two things, if you wanna consume a specific kind of content, use the engagement tools that you have to actually show Instagram you want more of this, and then also use that favorite list as a tool. If there's 50 creators that you make sure you wanna see all their stuff, add them to the list, and Instagram will make sure that they actually do that. And then the other side, if you're creating content, a lot of those things should be positive things for you because there's so many things that go into a post being shown to new people. And so even if you don't have a huge audience, if Instagram can make the connection that you are similar to another creator that may have a very large audience, it's more likely that you're gonna start getting shown to the people that like that person's content, right? So that's why it's so important to have consistent content going out there with consistent hashtags, keywords, consistent content types. So Instagram can figure out who you are and then who to show your content to. That's why it matters so much. And sometimes to grow, you just need to give them more data to make these connections to then slowly start showing you to the right people. That's usually what takes so long to grow is figuring out who those people are. And the fastest way to do that is to post consistently and to continue to improve your content, but targeted to a very specific audience. That's how you grow way faster. And if you do those things, it's only a matter of time until you start showing up in suggested for new people and ranking within the main feed, which is what so many people want to do. So there's a lot of good information there that should be for me. That's very positive things. Uh, I like to hear all those. So let's hear about reels because that is a hot button issue. Reels. Now the goal of Reels is to entertain you and most of what you'll see in your Reels tab are videos from accounts that you do not yet follow. See, that's big. That's huge right there. So that goes to show me as a creator that Reels is still the best top of funnel tool. So he literally just said, and this is the first he said this about any sort of content type, obviously with stories and, and now with main feed, is that Reels are more likely to go to people that aren't following you. So that view it as such, speak to a cold audience, make sure that your first impression, which it often will be, is a good one and make it entertaining. So that's why a lot of reels that perform, they have a similar flow and format because they're typically going to a cold audience. So use it as a tool for what it's good at, get a ton of people in your funnel and then use other content types to go a little bit deeper and really nurture these people because you may get them in the door with the reels, or real, but converting them into a loyal fan, a super fan, or a customer is harder to do with these short touch points, but that's why you have the other content formats to really go deeper with the people that want that most. But that's a huge thing for me. Definitely still make it your strategy, part of your strategy, but not your sole strategy. Follow. And so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna make a series of predictions about each reel to assess how interesting it might be to you. But I wanna first start with this idea of what do we even look at to rank in the first place? Because there are a lot of reels posted on Instagram every day and we have to decide which ones you might be interested in. But basically we take a look at what you interact with, 
other people who interact with the same content and what else they seem to be interested in. But then we go back into a very similar pattern that you've heard about in feed and stories. We make a series of predictions for each reel. So how like you are to watch the reel till it's over, how like you are to send the reel to a friend. So with everything else, he's been mentioning them in sort of in terms of like priority. And so he just said that watch time or getting someone to watch it all the way through is the most important metric they're looking for. That's probably why most reels that really do well, they look really sit, they look high quality footage. And then they're usually pretty punchy in terms of faster cuts or pace to the music, very aesthetic and easy to consume and consume all the way through. And they're saying that that's the most important metric that they're tracking. So you should be conscious of that when actually making that kind of content, understand it's going to a cold audience and it should be done and made in a way that really encourages people watching all the way through and ideally even rewatching it and sharing it, which is the later things and everything else he's going to mention friend and how likely you are to go to the audio page for that reel, which is a way of assessing if you might be interested in creating a reel yourself. And the signals we use are what you tend to be interested in on Instagram, what reels you've watched in the past, and information about the reel, about the author of the reel, and how much you've interacted with that author if you have, in fact, interacted with that author in the past. All of this to create a tab, an experience that's immersive, hopefully delightful. Delightful. Wow. That's a stretch. But uh, I love the fact that you're using the word author. I don't know if Instagram's trying to get away from the whole creator term. That's definitely one that's overused. But author is apparently what if, if you create Instagram content, you are an author. And hopefully it entertains you with some amazing videos on Instagram. Next, let's go to Explore. Explore, like Reels, is a recommendation surface. It's primarily content from accounts you do not yet follow, but it's photos and videos. So getting on the explore page is kind of the holy grail of growing, especially before reels. This was basically the only way that you could grow. And so getting on the explore page consistently is basically Instagram's seal of approval saying that your content is good enough to risk showing to new potential people that would potentially leave the app if they don't like your content. So that's how you really grow rapidly is because it's, it's like almost entirely brand new people. So this is a very important one that you want to be getting on consistently. Videos and the goal of explore is just to help you discover new things that you might be interested in. And so we and so often for a lot of people who are watching this, you're probably a little below uh, like uh, below 5,000 followers and there's this tipping point that once you get to typically like three to 6,000 followers on Instagram, you start showing up on way more places like across the explore page and on reels. It just comes so much easier. So keep pushing and keep giving them the data points that Maseri says they're asking for. And once it spills over, growth becomes far more rapid. They just need to get enough data to actually make a confident decision. Because at the end of the day, Instagram is a for-profit platform. And anytime they show a new person a piece of content, there's a chance they may not like it and then they leave and then Instagram just lost money. So you need to build trust with Instagram so that they feel confident showing you to their customers, which are the users. And you do that through doing all these touch points and consisting, consistently providing value to a specific audience. So you want to get on the explore more or less, and he's going to tell you how. Predict how like you are to like a post, how like you are to save that post, how like you are to share that post. And the information or the signals we use to make those predictions are very similar to the ones that we use for reels in a slightly different order. Actually, the number one signal or group of signals is information about that post. How that's actually incredibly valuable. So kind of the point that I mentioned earlier, they're looking for, they're looking to make associations. So if a group of people that are similar to you really like to post, you're more likely to see it. And that goes for anything across. They're trying to make connections of groups of people and groups of pages to make educated guesses as to what people would like. So that's why it's really important to serve a specific community consistently so they can make these connections with other people who are trying to serve similar communities. They can make those connections and start showing people your content because they're more likely going to like it. How popular is that post right now? The second most important is your history of interaction. So what do you tend to be interested in so on Instagram more broadly? Me? For me, I'm into cooking, I'm into men's fashion, I'm into architecture, interiors. And so my explore tends to reflect that. And the third and the fourth groups of signals are information about the author and your history of interacting with that author, which you may have never done, but if you have done, it's a pretty good signal that you might be interested in what they have to say. So if you can get someone to interact with your content once on the Explore page, they're more likely to see it moving forward, which is huge, huge, huge. Next, and I wanna thank you real quick for sticking with me because I know this is a long video, but I do wanna talk about shadow banning, which is- 
This is big. Listen up, people. A lot of people think they're shadow banned. Let's hear from the boss himself. It's an issue we take incredibly seriously at Instagram. Now, shadow banning as a term means different things to different people, but it generally is used to describe a situation where you're not getting as much reach as you think you deserve. And I want to debunk a really popular myth out there, which is that we do not suppress reach in order to get accounts to pay for ads. If there's an audience that is interested in what you share, it is in our interest as a business to help connect those people to your content as effectively as possible. Because the more we connect those people with the content they're interested in, the happier they're gonna be, the more they're gonna use Instagram, the happier you're gonna be, the more you're gonna use Instagram, and then we can run a business by advertising against that engagement elsewhere. Now, I do wanna also be clear so that's really big. I'm gonna let him, I'm gonna let him finish, but that's huge because a lot of people who have been posting a few years ago, they had great engagement posting, easy to create content that wasn't really that valuable for people. And now they're seeing a big decline. And so instead of saying, oh, the content is the problem, they say the platform's the problem, but that is pretty well put how we just said it. If your content is really good, it is in their best interest for everyone involved, all, st all the stakeholders to show that content to more people. And so, if you think you're shadow banned, it's probably a content problem. And I would look inwards instead of outwards. And this is him straight up saying that if you're not getting the reach that you want, it's probably a content issue, less likely a platform issue because Instagram wants people creating and consuming on their platform. And so they're going to give the best of the best the opportunity to succeed. That there are some instances in which we will reduce an account's reach or remove a piece of content because it violates our community guidelines, for instance. But it's important that you have full information and context whenever that happens, which is why we've built something that we call account status. So if you go to profile settings, you can go to account status, and there's really important information there about your account. You can see one, have we removed any photos or videos that you've posted on Instagram because they violate our guidelines and you can appeal those decisions if we've made a mistake. Two, you can see your account recommendability status. So are your photos and videos eligible to show up in services like Explore or Reels where people are seeing things from accounts they do not follow? And you can see why that status is the way it is and you can remove something if you need to or appeal a decision. And third, you can also see, is your account eligible to be recommended in services like Search and accounts you should follow? And again, you can appeal any decisions there because you deserve to know what's going on with your reach on Instagram. So please check out account status. Lastly, I want to call with some advice on how to grow. Okay, so that's huge news. A lot of people think they're shadow banned. Now Instagram's coming out and saying, if you are, we're basically going to show you and then why it happened across which pieces of content and what you can do about it moving forward. That transparency is huge. I really like that because that's one of the biggest complaints people have with IG is they feel like this is kind of just a big mystery. They don't know what's going on or what to do better. And now finally, he's going to summarize how to actually grow your audience, which is what we all want to do. Grow your reach and grow your audience on Instagram. Now, unfortunately, I need to be honest, there are no silver bullets, but there are some best practices that do tend to work. The first, which is probably the most important, is to experiment. Every audience is different and what they're interested in is also different. So you're gonna need to experiment and figure out what resonates with the people that follow your account. The second is check your insights. This helps you figure out what's working and what's not. Now, Shameless plug here, we at Flick have an amazing analytics suite where everything is put in a glance. Instagram does give you all this information, but it's kind of clunky when you try to look at it within the app. So we've built a tool where you can look at everything at a glance and navigate it very efficiently to find the information that you're looking for to make better content decisions. So shameless plug, if you haven't tried Flick out yet, we have so many tools that we talk about on this channel to help you grow on Instagram and other platforms faster. And you can try it completely for free using the link down below if you've not tried it out already. Strongly recommend it. Let's get back to what he has to say. Don't overreact to any one photo or video, but look for broader trends. What type of content tends to do well? What kind of content tends to do less well for you? And then evolve or iterate from there. Third is collaborate with other creators. This is huge. They released that multi-post or cross-post feature like a year ago, and so few people are taking advantage of this. From one piece of content, you both creators get a unique piece of content that goes out to their audiences. So you can cross pollinate your audiences so efficiently, efficiently and both parties win because you're either getting more content or you're getting access to another person's audience. We're getting both, which is fantastic. And that's a built in feature now that makes that so, so easy. So why more creators aren't doing this to find similar audiences or complementary audiences from other creators is beyond me. That should absolutely be part of your strategy to be doing consistently. There's just so much opportunity. Not many people are taking advantage. 
creators. We know people love seeing creators come together to create new things and to be creative in new and collaborative ways. Fourth is make sure you check out account status to see if there's any recommendability issues with your account so that you can address those or appeal if we've made a mistake. And lastly, Try and create original and engaging content. We're getting better over time at understanding the difference between aggregators mm -hmm. and creators that make original content. And we're going to look to... F so aggregators would be a theme page. And those were massive on Instagram. When I was first started growing meme, meme pages and theme pages six, seven years ago, those were the name of the game. They were the easiest to grow. You pick a niche and you just post other people's content on that page. They're saying that they're now getting sophisticated enough to spot pages that are like that. And they're not giving them the same kind of push that they used to. Instead, they're prioritizing original content creators because of how much more goes into actually creating that content. And the fact that you actually have the true relationship with that audience, which is music to my ears, especially since I don't really make theme pages anymore uh, because creators can really build an authentic audience and they're saying they're going to be rewarded for creating that original content especially since it takes so much more time typically to do favor the latter as much as possible now if you have any other questions about tips and tricks or how ranking works you can go to my link in bio right now and there's an overview of everything that we went over today and more now our hope is to help explain how instagram works to you so that you can make the most of the platform and so that instagram can be as vibrant and creative a community as possible. So more to come. See ya. Today. Thanks, Adam. So that was Adam Masseri, the head of Instagram. If you wanna go watch that video, go ahead and check it out. It's there right now. It was posted yesterday, if you're watching this. And those were my thoughts on it. Now let's just summarize the final points here. So this is great news if you're a creator. Go through that video, watch it a few times, take notes, listen to my notes and feedback that I said throughout this video, and start working those things in, understanding how Instagram pushes content. So work that into your creative process. Work that into how you're using these different features. Don't use every feature the exact same way and don't try to force a feature to be something that it's not. For example, with Reels, take advantage of the fact that it constantly reaches new people, but don't try to sell through Reels or go super in depth. Use the other features to get those more touch points and go more in depth. Instagram gives you so many tools, which is great, but typically they haven't been good on educating you on how to best use those, but this is a massive step in the right direction. So definitely implement everything that Adam said and don't forget to subscribe to this channel because every single week we're doing experiments and giving you the best tips and tricks to better maximize your reach and your sales through platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and all the other socials. So definitely click subscribe so you never miss a video here that can help you crush it on whatever platform you're looking to grow on. And to help you leverage the algorithms more efficiently, we made this video right here where we walk through best practices to actually make the algorithm work for you and do so faster. So go ahead and check this video out. You will become an algorithms expert and grow way faster. So go ahead and click this now, wherever it is. I will see you over there and we'll keep killing it. Peace.